Yeah, so our next session will be uh, by Professor Dheeraj Gar of uh, Shiv Nadar University. So, uh, just a second. Uh, yes, I can see that your presentation is already already there. So, uh, Professor Dheeraj is a uh, professor in the Chem Department of Chemical Engineering, uh, School of Engineering, Shiv Nadar University. So, sir, over to you. You can start your session. Okay, thanks a lot. Uh, good afternoon. Namaskar, everyone. So welcome everyone to this uh, workshop and uh, we are taking few courses, a few sessions on meshing. So Professor Hari Krishna sir has already taken one session on introduction about meshing, the purpose, what are different types and so on. And you also had some hands on on meshing in the previous sessions. I would like just to add more information, more understanding of what exactly meshing is and how it is going inside the open form. So in this, I will uh, discuss about the match specification and the validity constraints, how the numbering is done with the vertex space and edge, how the mesh is generated, and in the end, why do we require so many different types of meshes? So each of the thing, thing is important since you are doing on the <coughs> open form where uh, you have to write certain code, so you should have a visualization of what is happening inside and why it is required. So the major source of content here, uh, I have taken it from uh, open form itself. So for details, you can actually go to this link and actually go through it for more details. So let's start with the uh, classes. So the first is how to specify mesh and what are the constraints to validate it. So the basic thing is to start with the point, which is zero dimension, okay? So we need to have points, and they are located in 3D space. And what we do in uh, open form is that they, we create a list, and the numbering of each point starts from zero, okay? Unlike in other case, we say one, two, three, it starts from zero. So if we have three points, it will be numbered as zero, one, and two. Okay, now there are, Think that you cannot have two different points. The base of the mesh is the points, which are zero dimension. They are located in space, and they are numbered from zero, and they are stored in the with the numbering. Now the thing is that you cannot have two different points with two different number, but exactly the same identical location, same identical position. So there can only one point with the same identical position. Besides. Another uh, the constraint is that there cannot be any point that is not part of at least one phase, okay? So that means each point must be connected and it must be part of the phase. There cannot be isolated points which are there. So sometimes what happens, we may create many points, but we forget to connect them and that will may, may cause any issue, give you warning that there is an issue. Then from these points, we want to generate phases which is basically two dimension. So we cannot jump from 1D, 0D to 2D. So what you need is how to generate faces. It's basically done using the ordered list of points. So ordered list point means the point may have its own numbering, but you need to tell in which order you need to put so as to create phase. Now, what is the importance of order is that when you connect two neighboring points to in the list, it creates edge edge is one dimensional structure just like a line segment okay so once you are connecting edges when the edges are connecting back to origin it completes the thing and face is created and once face is created it's like a plane and every plane is having a direction which is represented by a normal vector and as it's the direction normal vector we face, use the right hand rule and you can remember that like A4 sheet is there. So you can write on both sides. So just to visualization, you can say one side is blue and another is red. So blue is in the positive direction or which is the preferred direction and the opposite direction or negative, whichever you want to uh, uh, as a reference is the red one. So blue we are talking is in the positive direction. So we can see this here, like this is the grid space created from points. So point zero going from one to two, three, four. 
This is how you write an open form and it creates a page. Now remember this thing, instead of writing like this, let's say I change the order. Instead I write the order, let's say 0, 3, 2, 1 and then 4. So do you think, despite mentioning all the 5 points, will it create any real phase? The answer is no. Because it will change the formation of edges. From 0, it will go to 3, 3 to 2, 2 to 1 and 1 to 4 and 4 to 0. So these two additional edges and the sequence will not create a realistic face or a surface. So order is important. Another thing is that in the same four, in the same five points, depending on the your mentioning like 0, 1 and 2. Let's say I stop at this point itself. Then what will happen? It will create a phase from 0, 1, 2 and 2, 0. So this can be one different phase. I can create another phase 0, 2, 3 and 0. So like this, I can create a phase by minimum three points. I can use more points, but minimum three points are required to create any phase. And remember from the geometry, three points are always coplanar. Only when four fifths are there, they may or may not be in the same plane, which will add additional complexity. Now, Moving to further things of the complexity of faces, then there are two different category of faces we see in the machine. What is called internal faces. What is meant by that is that in internal faces is between the cells. So when you are creating several cells, the common face between both of them is the internal face. Now it has to become part of both the face. Okay, and since this is common, so the face normal point into the cell with a larger label. So larger label means the cell which is the direction of uh, direction of normal on the surface would be from the cell which is formed first towards the cell which is formed later. Okay. So this is how we are doing. And from the previous case when we are talking about faces and the direction, we always follow right hand rule. So all the faces that should be made should have the normal towards the positive coordinate direction we are chosen. So as to have the consistency. Okay, so now these are the internal faces. Now another type is the boundary phase. So internal phase will always see two faces on two cells on both sides. It will be a common surface. Whereas the boundary faces are the one which will have only one cell on one side, but other, other side there will be no cell of the same block. There may be another block, but it's not part of the same block. And hence, it has to act as a boundary. Okay. So it will coincide with the boundary of the domain and address by one cell only as a boundary patch. And the face points, so that they are normal. If you look at the normal, they will point outside the computational domain. So when it is pointing outside the domain, it will not encounter any cell within the computational domain. Now, from this we want to generate, so we have come from 0D a point, we have come to the edge 1D, then from edge we generate 2D faces. Now, together we create this cell, which is 3D structure. So here, they can be list of faces in arbitrary order, no particular order is necessary, but there needs to be certain important things, properties, so as to ensure proper cell. And what are those? So first is the contiguous. That means they must, when you are creating cell, it must completely cover the computational domain first thing. That means no portion of the domain should left without any cell. And second, they must not overlap one another. That means they must share the faces, but not the face should not be present in some of the cell, inside the cell. It must be at the surface. Otherwise, this will not be realistic for normal machine. Second thing is the convex. Now what is the meaning? Well, we simply say cell in center inside the cell, but the convex meaning is coming from geometry. A basic definition says, if you take any two random points in a given structure, so let's say there's a plane given of any given boundary. You take any two random points, including boundary, and you create a straight line between the two points 
at no point this line will go outside the outside the plane outside the structure so such structures are called convex if it is going outside at even a single point then that geometry is not convex okay so this is to ensure that all points are in a way that every point connecting line between them is within the system cell itself then another point property should be closed then the cell must be closed and what does it mean there are two parts one is called geometrical close so all face vectors area vectors are oriented to point outward of the center so their sum should equal to zero vectors so if you have created the faces consistently in the positive direction so if you look at the cube let's say you create a cube in x direction so one from looking from outside one direction in the beginning one side would be red and another side would be blue so when you add both of them one is positive another is negative the area sum will be zero if both are blue then it will be an inelastic thing that's why you need to create in a uniform uh, way second is the topological this was the geometrical that means the direction of faces should be in the same uh, proper way second is the topological topological dictates that all the edges in the cell are used exactly by two faces of the cell what does it mean is that if you see the boxes like say the uh, there are sweet boxes some sweet box you create by simply folding the sides so each side is one face so like you call it close when all the sides properly connect to each other so there you will see each edge is a part of two attaching cell uh, attaching faces so that ensures that it is not open the cell is closed if if edge is shared by more than two faces on one side and one face on another then what we do that we create a additional point there at the meeting point and create instead of one single edge we create more edges so as to avoid this issue another is the orthogonality orthogonality is basically that two cells are uh, if there are two consecutive cells and you join them from center to center and you see the uh, face uh, normal of the face so angle between the normal of the face and the two lines connecting the center their angle should not be more than 90 because in that case the flux from one cell to another would be zero so that is the orthogonality is also part of the skewness so we want to restrict the skewness to certain level so now this leads to the another thing called as boundary once you have created the inner thing inner uh, you have matched the inner faces now you have to define at the outer which defines the boundary outer so there are list of patches in open form okay that is the name of the boundary like inlet outlet wall so like this there are conditions which you do so clearly one must contain only boundary faces and no internal faces so boundary must be on the outer surface not in the inside and to ensure that all surfaces external surfaces have been patched with the boundary the sum of all boundary face area vector should equal to zero so this condition ensures that you have not left any face which has not been given any boundary condition okay so this is a mathematical way you ensure that all faces so are properly given the boundary condition now when we have done this so how the numberings are there in the open form using the cell shapes so you can see we can say take a hexahedron okay so you can see the in the left most first we create a vertex zero so this will be the origin so zero then in the positive x1 direction or x direction you create one so that is one then in positive y direction or x2 you create point 2 then back to point 3 which is in the negative x direction but in the same and then from 3 it will automatically come to zero to create and you see if you see in this positive y direct z direction this is 
counter clockwise because the angle theta is positive in counter clockwise okay and hence it will be able to create this phase whose normal is in the positive direction positive z direction now to create this side we did we defined force which is in the positive z direction and from here again you follow the same sequence 5 6 and 7 once you are able to do then it completes the hexahedron okay now if you see it creates six faces so faces you can see this is space 0 then 1 the front face is then 2 at the back face is 3 the bottom face is 4 and the top face is 5 and the edges if you see from this this is the 0 edge 1 edge 2 so in this direction 0 1 2 3 10 then 4 5 6 7 and 8 9 10 11 so for x direction keeping in the x direction varying in the y and z you are doing in the beginning then keeping y common in variation in x z and then keeping z constant you doing in the other direction so this is how you are having so now you can actually visualize how the numbering is happening why the sequence is important now you can create different type of geometries with this thing so for example you merge 3 with 0 okay so you can create a wedge type so what will be the thing basically here 0 1 2 and 0 so because 3 is now is merged as 0 and then this is the lower face and the top face would should be then 3 4 5 6 because now there are only 6 uh, 7 points only so you can easily understand based on this that the third point has now shifted to zero location and accordingly faces will be created so this is how the face these are the faces six fa uh, five faces uh, so 0 1 2 3 4 and 5 so so those these are the faces it will be creating okay and accordingly edges are there so if you want to create a prism you can see here even the six has merged with three So, what will you write? Zero, one, two, zero, three, four, five, three. So this will create this one. So this is for the structure grid. If you want to go for let's say for pyramid, you know what to do. Okay, so tetrahedron and tetrahedron. So these are the different types it is creating, and the idea behind that. So in the block mesh generation, as I said, the thing that is taken is that the point zero is taken as the origin. then the first point is in the positive x direction the second point is in the positive y direction or x2 then x3 and back and then similarly for 4 5 6 7 so, so you can see here that this edge 9 is curved whereas the edge 10 is straight line so normally it should have been a straight line but you can actually make it arc type also you can give what should be the curvature of this line and the thing is as i said three points are always planar coplanar but the fourth point may not be coplanar and here that is the case it may happen that because of this these four points may not remain coplanar and hence the center of the cell of this face may not be physically on this area but its projection in this direction would be on the cell face okay so this is how mesh is generated now there is another thing that you might have uh, seen in the previous sessions or will be coming in what is the expansion cell expansion ratio now as defined the cell expansion ratio is the delta t upon delta s that means the last cell and the first cell the ratio of that is the expansion so if it is expanding this will be more than one if it is contracting it will be less than one so that how it is defined now if you look closely basically what happens is the cells are that are being created is following a geometric ratio series so you must all of you must be knowing geometric series so like if the this first cell is the length a then having a constant factor r the next cell would be ar and then next is ar square and so on so each consecutive cell would be having a ratio of r so here you can see technically the expansion factor or ratio is last cell which is ar to the power n minus 1 upon 
first cell which is A. So this is the total expansion factor. So you can actually create on your own. This in you can write equation accordingly. Okay. And you can see that if R is more than one, the cell will expand. What consecutive cells? If R is less than one, the consecutive cells will shorten. Now, why do we require this at all? That we will see in later part of the uh, presentation. Now, next come once you have created mesh, then you have actually create several blocks. Okay, so you may require to create several blocks, not just one block. Now, what to do? When you create multiple blocks, then there are issues. Like in this case, you can see these in these are inner faces, whereas these outer at what you can see is the boundary faces. Now, if you are bringing them together, then you need to match the face. So, when you are matching the face, they must they are formed from the same set of vertices. Okay, and the faces do not form an external boundary. And combine each collocated pair into a single internal face that connects cells from the two blocks. So you can merge two blocks. You can create them separately and then merge. What happens is that sometimes when you are generating geometry, so you generate different blocks separately, but then you bring them together and merge them into a single block. So when you want to merge them, well, match, uh, you make a single block. You need to match faces. Exactly, because if they are not matching, the information passed through them will not be similar. So that is the requirement. Now another thing that we require is the face merging. Like in this case, so what happens here is the group of faces from one patch from the one block are connected to another to form the patch. Okay, and they to create a new set of internal faces connecting the two blocks. Okay, so now here the when you merge these two faces, what happens? This external boundary is the new phase, rather than this and this together separately. So you can merge the faces when you have uh, several faces which have the same, let's say, same boundary condition. So let's say you have a cylinder and outer surface is the four different uh, surfaces are there. Each of them is, let's say, wall boundary condition. So instead of uh, instead of working on them independently you can merge them together and create a single boundary so like this you can merge the faces so as i said uh, you can create a wedge or another uh, type of uh, mesh depending on the requirement from eight so eight vertices is the common and uh, what you can do here is zero one two three in the first case and to make this wedge tag four five then 6 is written as 5 and 7 is written as 4. So 4, 5, 5, 4. So that will create this type. So whatever the type you need or it requires to be generated, it can be done accordingly. So actually there are several uh, softwares are there now, commercial software and others are there, which actually are doing all these jobs on their own to make it more user friendly. But at the end of the day, at the back end procedure remains same. Okay, they are charging you because they are doing on your part, making your life easy. And in those cases where this is not the case, you can do on your own and they are free of cost. So it bring, naturally brings all these things together to us is that, okay, we have seen so many different types of meshing, so different uh, types of the things. So what is the purpose of all together? And how will you decide which mesh to choose in what case and how, what should be the number? So, first of all is to have the adequate number and type of meshing. That is the very basic reason that why we have so many different types. Because both the number and the type, okay? As uh, Professor Hari Krishna has discussed structured, unstructured grid, in structured grid, there are different types we have seen. In an, an unstructured grid, tetrahead and tradesman, other types are grid. So we need to have an adequate number. And why do we have that thing? First, to cover the geometry, because we want to cover our geometry properly. Okay. Second is to get the coherent and conservative numerical solution. Okay. Because mass is nothing but the spatial representation of the basic equation we are using, the differential equation 
सो इफ यू रिमेंबर डिफरेंशियल इक्वेशन इज नथिंग बट वन वी से डेल्टा वाई डेल्टा एक्स टेंस टू जीरो ओके इन रियलिटी डेल्टा एक्स नेवर टेंस टू जीरो देर इज अ लिमिटेशन सो दैट लिमिटेशन दैट डेल्टा एक्स इज फाइनाइट इज द विजुअल रिप्रेजेंटेशन इन द फॉर्म ऑफ मैश ओके सो एज मैश टेंस टू बी स्मॉलर टेक्निकली वी आर सींग डेल्टा एक्स टेंस टू बी स्मॉलर एंड अप्रोचिंग द डिफरेंशियल इक्वेशन ओके so as we are approaching that we will get the result similar to the differential equation and third is to simulate different types of physical phenomena which may require the different type of machine we'll see and a uh, later chapter later session will be covering that so let's see this case so now you see this is the surface we want to generate the machine now if the machine as uh, previous uh, uh, session we have discussed if the geometry is simple and when i use the word simple it means generally straight lines which are orthogonal the structure meshing is straight forward case no issue with that so we are not interested in going for another type but unfortunately all geometries are not simple geometry like this is the you can see straight lines are there but angles are some angles are there then there are curvatures so would we be able to cover it with the structure meshing So let's start with this. In this case, so snappy has mesh is the thing which is going to generate. So let's say start with this. You can see now when we have a structure grid, then to cover this we start the grid, the cells, small cell, larger cell, and all that we start trying to cover every part of the geometry. So for doing the procedure, we create more and more to cover the boundary. So we need to do. so we created small cell somewhere small cell somewhere larger cell so very basic idea is that wherever the curvature or the gradient is large you need you require smaller machine okay the mathematical part is the taylor series when the uh, because we truncate it to the two terms making it the first order so the idea is that the delta x is small but when the gradient is very large then you need to make delta x even smaller further to make this approximation valid similarly here so you can see when you remove the remaining mesh which is not required to be computed it leaves the structure like this you can see clearly that using this mesh this type of structured mesh we are not able to cover the geometry in pro in proper way the curvature is not taken up properly in this direction from where it is outer side from where it is inside so how would you cover it further then you further restrict the uh, area on which you require meshing and then we further refine and change the thing truncate this part so you can see now those portion to cover or map the geometry boundaries properly from this it has been changed so some portions are being removed removed in the sense those vertices are moved to the point so different meshing is generated okay this is why you require different type of meshing then to further capture certain places where let's say here the drag is more or you want to see variations are high so you create additional surfaces additional meshing here okay so another example can be taken which you have taken from this uh, reference so you can see that wherever curvature is there uniform meshing in structured meshing is not a very good idea because it does not cover curvature properly so here you can see here we have used unstructured grid tetrahedron okay which is much easier to cover geometry the curvature is the least now one of the important thing that you can visualize here is there seems to be solid sphere and cylinder but what are the things you can simulate through them so depending on what is the properties of individual blocks so they are different blocks okay we have make them different blocks okay from this we have removed this part portion from this and this is there so their uh, interaction is at the surfaces where they need to match so depending on the properties in inside in each block you can simulate different things in the same geometry for example let's say i define air inside this block and 
there is a liquid inside this block so it's a physical case that bubble is in a liquid and if i simulate gravity then because of buoyancy it should rise up okay if there is no gravity i am basically simulating the zero gravity condition accordingly you will see these facts okay in the same if i make the reverse for example in the same sphere if i simulate if i declare the property of liquid and the this uh, channel or this cylinder i feel uh, i declare it as a air so this will simulate the condition of drop falling in the air in a channel okay so that is how i can simulate different thing i can simulate well, let's say this is oil this is water so it's like a oil drop in the water so same geometry can do several thing it can be considered static also if this is a metal and this is another metal i can see if in a heat transfer how will they move how will they expand or things so just because certain geometry is there does not mean that by default the machine or the system will know that what to do with it we have to define and accordingly it will be work out okay so if we have to create a cavity here we don't have to do, give anything we don't have to specify here so that will be taken as there is now material inside it so we can simulate a cavity also in the same place so as we see one of the reason that different type of geometries another numerical solution so in numerical solution one portion that has been covered earlier is the grid independence test now why do you require grid independence test already covered by professor hari kishni now the important outcome of that grid independence test is the increased number of meshing because you need to have a certain number of meshing at certain places certain place means those areas where you expect the variation gradients to be higher so you need to capture them so when you do that the overall number of meshing may increase now what it do is that it increases your computational time and resources okay now the thing is you cannot avoid grid independence test to get a correct answer if somebody thinks that i want to reduce the computational time and resource so let me do it at a lower grid it won't help there are more better there are better ways more intelligent or ways to achieve in a lower so if you are using a direct solver just giving you idea how much it is increasing so like say in case of the uh, structure grid they are direct solvers we are using let's say if we are using direct solver then the theory says that in one direction it depends on the n cube that means if you increase the number by twice the computational time will increase by 2 to the power 3 that is 8 times so if you are increasing the number in each direction by twice that means you are increasing number of mesh by 8 times the overall time will increase by 24 times 8 into uh, so to 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 8 into 8 times which is 64 times so you can see that one thing which you were able to do let's say in one hour earlier now it will take 64 hours to complete so that's a very substantial increase so we cannot choose the mesh blindly we have to be careful while we cannot bypass this thing so we can use structured grid we can use unstructured grid or a better thing can be a hybrid mesh if the system, if the software allows which is basically a combination of structured and unstructured grid okay so when we use hybrid grid we can be more judiciously place more meshing around the place where gradients are supposed to be high if we know beforehand or we expect from our understanding that in certain flow condition at these locations the gradient high gradient means high variation of let's say velocity pressure or any variable we are looking at is will be high and we can avoid uh, we can provide gray, uh, coarse meshing at place where the variation is smaller we can also use the symmetry for a given condition to reduce the total number of mesh we'll see how so let's say a simple case from this roughing so previously before that when they it was generated automatically it says the nodes are 1400 and elements are 1309 so nodes are the points vertex elements are the cells 
so we see these are the cells now when we make it properly arranged let's say in a structured form here whereas on these points we make it increased so the although this will give a better result than this and with the lesser number of nodes which is 1073 and elements are reduced to 982 so we can see the substantial reduction in the computational resources and time despite getting and besides getting a better result by judiciously putting the meshing we can also see that the same geometry can be meshed with the different types so you can easily see in one in one or the other condition meshing numbers can be great much greater like in this case is much less whereas here it is much higher in these cases so while you will get the same result but the computational time may be too high okay so that is the thing another thing is like this geometry this is a circular or the curvature conjectures are always tricky one because using structure grid we definitely like to do but then you will not be able to capture the curvature easily in the structure grid here what you are seeing is the geometry visualization but from the grid perspective it is very coarse so if you want to capture the curvature well the number of structure grid in this direct in the axial direction would be too high on the other hand the same thing can be easily achieved using the unstructured grid in a less number of meshing so one of the tricky part is that which you want to use depends on the post processing part of the software you are using sometimes certain capabilities are applicable only to one type of machine so let's say uh, there is a one so one software let's say you want to trace uh, you want to track the particle from the big, uh, uh, theoretical particle from uh, entry to exit it may be available only for structure grid so if you want to do this thing that okay how the particle is moving after the simulation if the the software does not allow for unstructured grid you have to do it for structure grid only so one has to see what grading is that what are the what post processing is required and based on that you can make a judicious uh, choice another example from the console you can see is here this is the rim of the tire right now you can see why are using unstructured grid the number of mesh would be too high whereas using hybrid some places you are where the curvatures are high you use the unstructured grid where the curvature is less and the variation expected to be less we use coarse grid so the overall number of mesh is much reduced we can further reduce the meshing by exploiting the symmetry so you can see it is uh, symmetric in this direction so if the force or the thing we are uh, looking at is a uniform throughout does not affect the direction then we can take one fifth of this and we can apply symmetry boundary condition on both sides okay in case of turbine and such rotary dynamic we can apply cyclic boundary condition knowing that one part outlet of one side becomes the inlet for the another but if in this case the process is not symmetric let's say there is a force on this direction only then we cannot apply or use the symmetric boundary symmetry of this thing so we have to be we have to be careful while exploiting the symmetry another thing is like in this case so here you can see there are two case two things so it's a microfluidic channel inside a slab so first of all how do you know which is inlet and outlet so you have to define boundary condition at this or this point second by itself the system does not know that which one is the where the fluid should flow and where it should not so you can see it that this is a glass tube in a pool of liquid or you can see it another way that this is solid and the fluid is flowing in this one so depending on the type of boundary condition and block properties you can simulate different conditions so there are two different colors because these two uh, they represent two different blocks and you can see if you more that since two blocks are connecting to each other touching each other their face must match okay then only you will be able to simulate say transfer of heat from one block to another or any other thing which we are planning to simulate 
easily so that brings the uh, another last slide which is so there are different types like in this triangular or tetrahedron or even a polygon type this may be quadrilateral hexagonal type and we can use tetra uh, hybrid in one direction and uh, unstructured in another so here you can see an example where different type of meshing is used in so one structure is structured here tetrahedral here okay here you are making it even finer meshing using tetrahedral whereas on the other side in this one same geometry is meshed with the polyhedral and structure grid so you can see and think of that in both the cases number of meshing may be large in one smaller in another you may be able to cover geometry properly okay the results as you make the any mesh smaller and smaller you will get the same result but at the end of the day what is important is that you are able to get the results in a reasonable time with the reasonable effort available to you you cannot plan that okay i have uh, infinite time infinite resource i will be able to deliver these are the practical constraint that leads to a limited choices so that's all from my side thank you very much so if anybody wants to ask some questions to professor gar you can go ahead sir uh, for an air foil case which type of mesh would you recommend well i am not expert with the air foil type uh, but anyway the thing is as i said depending on what is the level what are the uh, things you are looking for is simply flow uh, what level uh, the you need to see it may be different at different location where you expect more variation so if the flow is less uh, the uh, renault number is less uh, the meshing may be more like this one as you can see in this one at the back as the flow number increases you at the back also you may require more and more finer meshing so it depends what capability of the software your uh, your software is having it also depend the computational power you have it also depend the time you have to solve the problem so in last session uh, previous session professor hikishnan said ki in structural grid it may be slower compared to and structure grid so let's say time is not the constraint so you will see the computational power in in the case of unstructured grid generally they are indirect solver which are iterative in nature so it has a much lesser computational requirement matlab they are in iterative so they take longer time but they can do in a lesser way okay so it all depends it will ultimately bring down to that what are the constraints you are working in so that is how it is to be selected i hope i am well, i am not expert in that but i try to answer to some extent okay sir thank you thank you thanks a lot hello sir yeah uh, sir how can i in slide different kind of message in open form today i have in slide block mess or hex type mess in uh, open form but in uh, you are visualizing hybrid mess and poly hedral mesh how can i use slide in open form i think there may be a separate session for that pile uh, if there would be a session for that pile hello yes yes sir yeah so would there be a separate session to uh, teach them the unstructured grid and the hybrid uh, uh, meshing in this course uh, uh, no sir no sir it would be one for the structured unstructured grid yeah so uh, i would suggest please be in contact with the fosi team and they may be able to help you guide in this uh, how to do it actually my my purpose of my talk was to make you aware more about that these things can be done and not as to how to do it exactly so for greater detail i would suggest anyone who is thinking of using hybrid grid another thing i think they better be in contact with the fosi team and they would be happy to help you out so if you want to use unstructured grid what you can do is you can use salome or make a mesh in ansys then you can import in open form that you can do okay sir uh hello yeah uh, hello sir sir this is roshan from uh, roshan so mm -hmm. sir i am asking sir if if i don't want to use means uh, any of the commercial software like ansys 
then uh, what is the possibility of generating this kind of polygon kind of mess? So if you are using any uh, commercial software, what no, is no, sir, sir, I'm, I don't want to use any commercial software. Okay. And uh, I want to create this polygon kind of mess. Okay. Then uh, do we have some kind of some open software or uh, uh, like then uh, or using the open form itself can be how to create uh, such kind of mess. Uh, polygon mess. Okay, Anshuman, can you answer for that? Actually? There's Blender. You can use Blender to create meshes. Yeah, you it's can use, use Blender, but uh, we prefer Salome. Salome is a free open source software that we use time and again to create uh, unstructured mess okay. and then import it in open form. Okay. okay. Sorry, what is it called? Salome? How do you yes, spell Salome. it? S-A-L-O-M-E. Salome. Okay, thanks. Okay. So can you explain the mesh for heat transfer from the surface, which you have explained? Uh, so let me see. Second, last slide is this one. I think this is what you're talking. So in this, if you are heat transfer, you're talking in this portion. I think, see, you can simulate several things depending what you are planning to simulate. So let's say this is a uh, channel and the liquid is flowing here so in this block the blue one you are de defining the properties of a liquid okay now in this liquid this is in contact with so the other the green one is to be defined as the solid so you will define is the property of solid now what solid let's say copper glass whatever that you want to say so basically we are now saying uh, or uh, we are trying to say that in this liquid, one side the liquid is entering, the liquid or let's say gas or any fluid, it is flowing through it and exiting at the other end. And while flowing through, it is interacting with the solid structure, the green one. Now, what are the things you can simulate? So you can simulate simply flow. You can simulate the heat transfer. You can simulate both at the same time. So like this, whatever you want to do, so the boundary condition will be accordingly. So for example, you want to simulate flow only. So the boundary condition for flow condition would be, so at the wall, the wall boundary condition. Now, if you want to uh, simulate heat transfer also, then the boundary condition has to be there for the temperature. Now, whether it is the heat flux, whether it is a constant temperature, or you want to calculate based on convection that you need to define so if you define that boundary condition it will take it as the heat heat transfer condition and then you have to define then what is the initial temperature what is the temperature at the surface or the flux accordingly things will evolve now you want to couple it then based on heat transfer let's say the temperature inside the fluid is increasing so if you do not simulate the changing in density and viscosity of the fluid along with the temperature rise or decrease, whatever the case may be, then you are basically decoupling the heat transfer with the flu momentum transfer, which may not give you proper result. Or under the condition, it may be acceptable that the rise or change in the temperature may not have a significant impact. There in such cases, you can use it and you may still get a reasonable correct answer but in the cases where viscosity density is changing are uh, sensitive to temperature there you need to mo simulate model them as a variable of temperature accordingly it will evolve it will evolve with temperature and accordingly flow and heat transfer will there and that's where you can so it will become a coupled problem heat transfer and momentum transfer and it will consume more time despite having the same number of mesh and everything, but it will consume more time to evolve into rightful solution. So I hope uh, that is clear. But if there is anything I can help. Sir, can you, if you wanted to know how much time the liquid would spend inside this, could you do that? So you want to uh, know the time, basically it's the residence time. So basically what is the total volume of this structure? divide by the average velocity. So that will give you the residence time, average residence time. I so see, one okay. thing is this, uh, if you already know it, then it's fine. If you know, want to calculate, then you can do the experiment. 
also what is the rtd of this system that would be then a uh, transient uh, study of this one that it won't be a steady state so so that would be a different solver then ha uh-huh. ha solver would be different that, that's what i said then depending on the process you want to simulate the solvers would be accordingly but the meshing meshing i'm just matlab here i'm concentrating on meshing so meshing will remain similar only the thing what you want to simulate would be thing if you want Got to see the evolution of a, a solution with time then you naturally have to use a transient solver okay anything else uh, i may help so i think if no no uh, no more question is there uh, i will say thank you everyone we thank you a lot uh, professor dheeraj it was a very good um, informative session thank you very yes, much ma'am thank you thank yeah. you everybody